Hello my sax playing friend, welcome back to the 3 day saxophone transformation challenge. My name is Alexander Mathias from saxophonemasterclass.com and we're talking all about how you can transform your saxophone playing with what I call the three pillars of saxophone transformation. So if you missed day one of the 3 day saxophone transformation challenge, go and check it out now. There's a link below this video and I go into a lot more detail on what these three pillars are. Basically you can see results faster, you can see transformation in your saxophone playing with these three pillars even if you just started on a saxophone or maybe you're taking it back up after a long break or maybe you're taking it up later in life and you're not sure if you have the talent and you don't have the musical background to feel like you can master this instrument well these three pillars of saxophone transformation can still apply to you and help you with your saxophone journey so the three pillars are constructive criticism, curated coaching, and a caring community. And I had all of these in my life as I was learning the saxophone at places like the Royal Irish Academy in Dublin, Ireland, where I'm from, and Berklee College of Music in Boston, where I studied to get my music degree. I had these three pillars in my life. I was getting constructive criticism from some amazing teachers. I was getting curated coaching so that I knew where I was on my path and what I needed to work on in order to reach my goals. And I had a caring community of other saxophone players to be inspired by, to get encouragement from, to share my journey with, to share my frustrations with, to share my progress, to share my excitement about learning a new song or learning a new scale or performing out in public and having them there to support me. I had all of this at Berklee College of Music and at the Royal Irish Academy and it really did help transform my saxophone playing and it really put me on a path that allowed me to make a career from this instrument. After I graduated from Berklee College of Music, I actually toured the world with a band called The Commitments from the movie of the same name. If you haven't seen it, it's a really great movie, really fun. But the band from that movie ended up touring the world and I was part of that band for a couple of years. And that led to even more opportunities. I played with Amy Winehouse on national television. I played with Glenn Hansard on national news. I even put out my own music as an artist, won awards and toured the country. And this all led to me coming to Los Angeles which is where I live now. And since I've moved here, I've had even more amazing opportunities to pursue the saxophone as my career. I've played on award-winning movies. I've played on commercials for Coca-Cola. I've played on computer games like Sonic Team Racing for Sega. And I've even been able to play on top 10 selling albums for platinum artists. I got to tour all over the Americas, playing at venues like the Hollywood Bowl, Madison Square Garden, Mexico City Arena. I've been able to have these amazing opportunities and it was because I had these three pillars in my life for so long and I was able to develop all the skills necessary to make a career from this instrument and today I'm going to get into a lot more detail on curated coaching and how this is so important for your saxophone journey I'm so excited about today because I'm going to be showing you some amazing tools for transforming your saxophone playing I'm going to talk all about my saxophone mastery system and the five core principles that you need to focus on in order to learn your favorite songs, in order to get a great tone on the sax and be able to play those low notes and high notes with ease, in order to improvise and jam around your favorite songs, in order to get better rhythm on the sax and be able to play faster on the saxophone and sound like the sax players on your favorite recordings. Maybe you're just trying to figure out the notes of songs by ear, but you can't quite get it and you're trying to figure it out. Whatever your goals are on a sax, the saxophone mastery system can help you with that. And I can't wait to go into detail in today's lesson. So I talked about how constructive criticism in my journey with learning and mastering the saxophone was so important. I was able to get the feedback I needed and get the right information at the right time. And this is so important, right? You could be struggling with just trying to get a consistent tone, being able to play notes with ease. And the reality is there's a hundred answers to that problem. 
It all depends on what level you're at. If you're in the beginning stages, there's one type of solution. If you're a little further along, there's another solution. If you're more advanced and you're trying to get a really big sound and you're trying to sound like a famous sax player and you can't quite get it, there's another solution to that. And so there's so many different answers and it's really hard to know which answer applies to you. So getting constructive criticism solves that problem. If you can get constructive criticism like I do with my students inside the sax circle coaching community I showed you yesterday I was giving them specific advice specific criticism on their tone based on their level I was giving them specific exercises at the beginning stages and then a year later I was giving them more advanced exercises to work on and this is important because if you get more advanced exercises in the early stages of your playing what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna feel frustrated you're gonna feel overwhelmed because you're not gonna be able to practice those exercises you're not gonna be able to get those exercises so it's important to know where you're at in your journey and get the constructive criticism that you need in order to get to the next level. So if you want to learn more about why constructive criticism is so important, go ahead and check out day one. Again, there's a link in the description of this video. Today, I want to get into the second pillar of saxophone transformation, which is curated coaching. Curated coaching is all about getting a systematic approach to learning the saxophone. You can't just pick up information from different books, from different videos, from different courses and try to piece it together. You need to have a very systematic approach to learning the saxophone, which is why I came up with the saxophone mastery system. There's five core principles that you need to focus on as a saxophone player in order to see progress, in order to finally master the saxophone. And I focus on each of these core principles individually. I isolate these core principles so you can focus on each one at a time. So these five core principles are tone, scales, technique, improvisation and embellishments. And in each core principle, I have different systems and different approaches to really mastering each of these aspects of saxophone playing. So I talked briefly yesterday about how you can get a great tone on the saxophone, but I actually have another system within the saxophone master system on how to get a great tone on the sax. It's called the BET saxophone tone system. And this is an acronym for breathing, embouchure and throat. And these are the three things you need to focus on if you want to see improvement in your tone. So yesterday I gave the example of how my teacher showed me how to breathe correctly. And this is so essential if you want to get a good tone on the sax. I then told you about how I showed my student, Pat Gill, how to change his embouchure from the thin lip approach to the fat lip approach. This was another technique I had to learn in order to get a big sound on the sax. And then finally, the throat is another muscle that you need to work on in order to improve your tone. And I showed my other student, Joe Hamilton, how to do this through overtones. So there's all these different ways to improve your tone, but if you don't break it down in a systematic way, it makes it a lot harder to really understand what you need to work on. And that's why curated coaching is such an essential part of learning the saxophone. You can't just pick up random tips as you go. You're not going to see clear progress in your playing. But what if you have other goals, like you want to learn your favorite song, you want to figure out the fingerings of a song, you want to learn how to improvise and jam around that song, you want to embellish the song and jazz it up and give it more character and personality. Well, the saxophone mastery system helps you with all of that. And I want to give you an example of that today. So I'm going to play the song Amazing Grace and show you how these five core principles apply to making the song Amazing Grace sound amazing, right? How you can make it sound great on the saxophone by applying these five core principles. Now, if you want to download the sheet music and the note names for Amazing Grace so you can try to follow along, I actually have a download to the PDF in the link below, or you can just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash amazing grace and you can download it there absolutely free. Now inside the Sax Circle Culture community, I actually have a step-by-step -step lesson on this song where I show you the fingerings and the note names up close. So you don't even need to read sheet music. You can just copy me as I play and show you the song. But I'm gonna get more into this curated coaching aspect of the Sax Circle Culture community later in the video. 
So now I'm going to show you how those five core principles apply to learning the song Amazing Grace. So I'm going to play Amazing Grace in a way that maybe a pro saxophone player would play it and I'm going to explain how these five core principles can help you with achieving the same goal of playing this song in a really cool jazzy pro way. And I'm going to show you how the five core principles apply to playing the song like this. How you can also start to see a path to learning how to play a song like a pro. So let me play the song for you first and I'll explain what I'm doing. So that's Amazing Grace played with embellishments, played jazzy, played with character, with a big sound. This might be one of your goals, to play songs in this charismatic way, to play songs in this jazzy way and be able to improvise around it and give it personality. So the five core principles of my saxophone mastery system can help you with this. And I'm gonna take you through each core principle now. So number one is tone. In order for me to get a great tone on this song, I need to practice very specific exercises. So we talked about breathing, embouchure and throat and how you need to work on each of those aspects in order to improve your tone. But the first thing you wanna do when you're learning a song like this is figure out what the lowest note of the song is and figure out what the highest note of the song is. So the lowest note is gonna be your G, which is here three fingers in the left hand, and the highest note is gonna be G with the octave key. So it's really important to know what the range of the song is so you can practice your tone within that range. So we take the lowest note and we start practicing our long tones. So you wanna take the lowest note G and just do a nice long tone like this. And you'd want to continue up the scale, up the different notes within that range so you can get long tones on each note. So let's say you go up to A now. And so on and so forth. This is going to make it so much easier to play the song. If you know how to get long tones, if you know how to get a consistent tone on every note of the song, it's going to be so much easier to play that song. So this is what you need to do, especially if you're a beginner or intermediate player, you need to warm up using the notes of the song, using the range of the song. Now, of course, there's dozens of other exercises. We could go into different exercises where you start really quiet and get louder and get quiet again. We could talk about overtones. We could talk about all different techniques for improving your tone, but this is the most basic thing you need to do when you're practicing a new song. You need to figure out the range, what the lowest note is, what the highest note is, and just practice long tones. Practice getting that breath support. Practice getting the correct embouchure so you can get consistent notes every time. So you might practice on each note three times before you move on to the second core principle, which is scales. So scales are really important, and the way it applies to this song is that Amazing Grace uses a very specific scale. So when I'm playing Amazing Grace in this key, which is the key of C major, I know that I'm only gonna be using the notes of the C major scale. So if I know I'm using the notes of the C major scale, I need to practice C major. I need to practice the notes of C major and get those notes into my fingers. So I might actually just practice C major by itself in two octaves. So let me play that for you now. So 
So that was just C major in two octaves. And if you want the fingerings for that, it's in the download along with Amazing Grace. Just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash Amazing Grace. There's a link below this video. So why am I practicing C major? Well, if you look at the notes of Amazing Grace, all the notes in that song only use the notes within the C major scale. Let me show you what I mean. So just taking the first few notes of Amazing Grace, we're going from G up to C, up to E, down to C again, up to E again, D, C, A, G. All these fingerings are part of the C major scale. The notes never deviate from the C major scale. And this continues for the rest of the song. All the notes in this song never deviate from C major. So it's really important to just practice the fingerings of C major, because that's gonna help you with executing the notes on this song. And now you're probably wondering, how do you figure out the key? How do you figure out the scale of the song? The best way to figure out the key of the song is to look at the last note of the song. The last note of this song is C. That was the last phrase of the song and the last note was C. Now it could be a major key or it could be a minor key. So if it's a minor key, it would be C minor. If it's a major key, it would be C major. This song is in the key of C major for alto sax. And another way to figure out how this song is in a major key or the minor key is to look at the key signature of the music. If the music doesn't have any sharps or flats, that means it's C major. If the music had three flats, B flat, E flat, and A flat, then it would be C minor. So this can get confusing, but that's why it's so important to understand your scales. If you know your scales, especially your major scales, it's gonna make it so much easier to learn songs like Amazing Grace. Now I have a three-step system for learning all your scales. It's very simple. The first step is to learn the letter names of the scale. So if you're trying to learn the scale of C major, just learn the letter names C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, right? There's always seven letter names in every major scale. Once you've memorized that, try to finger through the notes as well. So let's start on low C and just finger through the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And make sure to say the notes out loud as you finger them C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And then of course you have to do the same thing going down. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. And do this two or three times. So once you've learned the letter names, once you've fingered through the notes up and down the scale a couple of times, now the third step is to play the scale. So we simply play the scale very slow, try to tongue every single note, like this. <laughs> This is just a simple way of figuring out the scale, getting it into your fingers, understanding the letter names, so you can easily play the notes of the song that you're learning. Now the third core principle is technique, and that's all about rhythm, articulations, and dexterity in your fingers. I call it my rad technique system, and you need to focus on each of these three aspects within technique. So in order to improve your rhythm, you have to practice to a metronome. And you need to play, for example, one note per beat to a metronome and this helps you with improving your rhythm the second part is to improve the articulations which is how you tongue the reed so you get the same metronome and you practice by just tonguing once per beat so if the metronome is going at 60 beats per minute for example just tongue the reed every beat and then dexterity is all about improving the speed in your fingers you're practicing to the metronome and you're trying to improve your ability to play in time 
using good articulation with your tonguing and being able to transition from one note to another. And I've had to isolate all of these different aspects of my technique in order to improve my playing, in order to be able to play songs like Amazing Grace with ease. And you can learn these aspects as well. So tone, scales and technique are so important when it comes to improving your ability to play the saxophone, improve your ability to learn songs, and really it's the foundation for everything when it comes to learning the saxophone. If you're not focusing on your tone, your scales and your technique on the sax, you're going to fall way behind. You're gonna see roadblocks in your playing. You're not gonna be able to move on to the next stage. And you need to isolate these core principles one at a time. So even with just those three core principles, you can play Amazing Grace really well. And it might sound something like this if you don't put improvisation or embellishments onto the song. Now the song sounds perfectly fine and you definitely should practice just playing the song in this simple way. With great tone, with great rhythm, playing in time and being able to execute every note with ease. This should be your first goal and it's really important to get to this basic foundational level of playing a song before you move on to improvising, before you move on to embellishing. So I really encourage you to focus on tone, scales and technique in order to build this foundation. But eventually you want to be able to start improvising around this song. So how would you do that? Well, this is core principle number four. And like I said, you need the foundation of tone scales and technique because the number one rule for improvising around a song is improvising around the scale of the key. So like I said, Amazing Grace is in the key of C major. We use the scale of C major. Therefore, we improvise around the scale of C major. And this is a great place to start when you're learning to improvise around a song. Just use the notes of C major. So again, this is why it's really important to learn your scales. If you didn't practice C major, if you didn't know all the fingerings up and down the whole saxophone, it would be a lot harder to start improvising. So let me just put some simple improvisation on Amazing Grace using the scale of C major. So that was me improvising very simply over Amazing Grace, but I just used the notes of the C major scale. This is a great place to start. This is a great place to start improvising around this song. And that's what a lot of improvisers think about when they're improvising around a song. And that's personally what I think about when I'm improvising around a song. I think, what key are we in? Are we in the key of C major? Okay, I'll play the notes of the C major scale to improvise. Now there's so much more you can get into when it comes to improvising, but this is some ideas that you could now use for when you're improvising around song. And that's why this is one of the core principles of saxophone mastery. If you want to start jazzing up your songs, if you want to start getting creative, giving it personality, you need to learn how to improvise. And then finally, we have embellishments, where you can start adding grace notes, you can start adding bends, adding jazz turns, growling, glissandos, falls, trills, all these different techniques for giving your song a little more pizzazz, giving it a little more of a jazzy sound. So let me show you what I mean when I apply these embellishment techniques.
So I kept mostly to the melody there, but I was adding all these embellishment techniques. I was adding grace notes, I was adding turns, I was adding some bends, a little bit of growling. This is what gives your song life. And that's why embellishments is one of the five core principles of my saxophone mastery system. So I know that was a lot of information. I hope that didn't overwhelm you, but that's why I break everything down into five core principles. You're not supposed to know all of this in one go. You're supposed to focus in on your tone and focus on one exercise. You're supposed to focus in on your scales, focus in on one scale, focus in on technique and just practice one exercise to improve your technique. You're supposed to work on these individual core principles and take your time, pace yourself, but you're also supposed to see exactly where you are on the path. You're supposed to see what your goal is. If your goal is to get a great tone, well focus in on core principle number one, focus in on the different exercises, but take your time. Start with the simple exercises, master those, then work on getting the more advanced exercises as you progress. And that's why the saxophone mastery system is so important. It's so important to have this curious coaching so you can focus in on individual aspects of your playing because you might have a really great tone you might have a really nice sounding tone but your technique isn't very good so you need to focus in on your technique you need to focus in on being able to transition between notes you need to focus in on getting better rhythm or maybe you just don't know all your scales yet. Maybe you're still working on the different major scales, but you really want to learn all 12 and you only know three. Well, now you focus in on core principle number two, scales, focus in on learning a new scale every day or every week and practice the three-step system I showed you. Practice learning the letter names, fingering through the notes and saying the letter names out loud, and then playing the scale in a very simple way, just tonguing every note. This is the system you need to work from if you really want to see transformation and you really want to see progress in your playing. So I really hope you got a lot out of that. I really hope that was something that was helpful for you. But I know you might be thinking, well, this sounds like a lot of information. This sounds like so much to take on. I just learned about these five core principles and there's all these different things you have to learn about these five core principles. I feel like I don't have enough time to learn all of this. Well, that's the beauty about this system. You can actually take your time with learning each of these core principles. You can actually pace yourself. So it's not about taking all the information on at once. It's about learning it at the right time. It's about learning it at your own pace. So I have a systematic approach to teaching all of these core principles from beginner all the way to advanced. And you can actually take your time with it, go at your own pace, pick up from where you left off when you get time. Or maybe you're thinking, I don't have a musical background. I don't know how to read music. I don't know if I'll be able to understand all of these core principles. Well, I actually explain everything step by step. So you don't need any musical background. You don't even need to read sheet music. You just need to understand the different note names of the fingerings on the saxophone, which is honestly essential if you want to master the saxophone, if you want to play your favorite songs. You'd need to know what each of the fingerings mean. And once you know that, which I show you step by step, then it's going to be easier to figure out how to improve on your scales, how to start improvising. And of course, things like improving your tone don't require you to have any musical background or know anything about reading music. And all of these five core principles apply to every saxophone. Doesn't matter what saxophone you play, whether it's alto, tenor, baritone, soprano, or any other type of saxophone, these five core principles apply to your playing. In fact, this system applies to a lot of different woodwind instruments as well. I use this for when I'm trying to improve my flute playing or improve my clarinet playing. These five core principles still apply. So I hope you're starting to see the importance of curated coaching. I really wanna take you in now to my Sax Circle coaching community and show you the coaching aspect of what I do inside this community. We actually go live every single month and discuss one of these five core principles. We talk about tone one month, we talk about technique another month, we talk about improvisation another month, and I go deeper and deeper into all these different core principles. Not only that, you get all the replays of all the masterclasses, so you can actually go and watch 
any of the replays. And if you want to focus in on tone, for example, I have multiple masterclasses on that. Or if you want to focus in on improvisation, I have a couple of other masterclasses on that. And you can start going in and studying my coaching from these different masterclasses. You also get access to my songs and solos library where you can get access to step-by-step -step lessons of me teaching songs like Amazing Grace, like Somewhere Over the Rainbow, or Christmas songs like Silent Night or Jingle Bells, and I'm always adding new songs, as well as saxophone solos like Baker Street and Careless Whisper. So you can actually learn all of those songs and solos step-by-step -step with the fingerings. You don't need to read sheet music, and I take you through everything and demonstrate everything for you so it's really easy to learn. And all of this curated coaching ties in to constructive criticism. You can actually learn a song from the song library, post your video every month for constructive criticism, and then I point you to the masterclasses to help you with improving on that song. So you're getting constructive criticism and curated coaching in one place. But of course, there's that third pillar of saxophone transformation, a caring community. And I'm gonna get into a lot more detail on why that's so important in day three of the saxophone transformation challenge. But that is a massive part of the Sax Circle coaching community. You get a whole community to hang out with, to get support from, to get encouragement from. It's all inside the Sax Circle coaching community. And now I only open up the Sax Circle coaching community twice a year. I'm actually opening up the community next Monday. You can join the waiting list below if you want. But this is what you're getting inside the community. You're getting the constructive criticism, you're getting the curated coaching, and you're getting the caring community. So I'm really looking forward to talking more about my community and the people inside tomorrow in day three and giving you a little more detail on what you get inside this membership but until then please let me know what you got out of this lesson tell me what you learned the most about the five core principles comment below and tell me what aha moments you had I really want to know as it really helps me to become a better teacher all right my friend remember to download the amazing grace PDF below just go to saxophonemasterclass.com forward slash amazing grace you can also get the fingerings for the C major scale as well. I really hope you got a lot out of this. Until day three of the Saxophone Transformation Challenge, have a great day and happy playing.